welcome to lecture number 12 in this lecture series on digital forensics with me, Joachim Sjöverstad, from the University of Skövde. Uh, the, uh, the topic today is uh, Password Recovery Toolkit from Access Data, or PRTK. We're going to do a little overview of that, and we're also going to do an overview of uh, the relevant parts of FTK so that we get in some... Uh, some background information, uh, but before we do before we do that, I just want to have a, a small little recap. So if I'm just going to open up uh, a notepad here, uh, I want you to remember that when we want to do password cracking, there is basically two versions uh, or two things that we can attack. We can attack the uh, password or the encryption algorithm itself. Or we can attack the password, and if we want to attack the algorithm, then we do look for some some weakness in the encryption scheme that is used, and we break that and get access to to the file that we want. If we do a password attack, we do so, use some kind of mechan mechanism to uh, to find the password for for the file that we want to crack. Um, what is nice with the PRTK is that it contains modules for all the attacks. Uh, against the algorithms that uh, the guys at Access Data have has figured out, and what I want to focus on here is uh, the password attacks where we try to figure out the passwords. And there is basically two attacks, where one is the brute force attack, and the brute force attack is where you try every possible password, every possible combination of signs until you find the correct password. Uh, the the pro with that attack is that you will always, always succeed, and the con is that it will take uh, immense amount of times in many cases. So uh, instead, we commonly use the dictionary attacks, uh, where we try to build a word list with possible passwords, and we try the the words one of the one of the other. And here, I want to mention that we can do pretty large word list because looking at, uh, for, for instance, TrueCrypt or VeroCrypt encryption, it's not uncommon that we can do like 10 billion tries in, in 24 hours. So uh, there are different uh, mechanisms for how to build the word lists that, that I'm going to discuss and there are also mechanisms for how to um, work with the word list, do different mutations to the word list, combine them in different ways and so on and so forth. Um, so with that that said, um, let's go th let's go right to it. Um, the different ways that we do uh, a word list, as we discussed in a previous chapter, is well there is using the standard dictionaries in different languages uh, and doing mutations to that. There is doing uh, collecting data about the person whose files we're trying to crack and do word lists from that, but there is also, when we work with FTK, the option to ex export all words in the case. You, you, you remember the discussion on the index that we used for searching, you can export all the words in the index and do word lists from that, and what that means is that if the password is written down anywhere in the in the computer, it will most likely end up in the index, and therefore in the word list and the files that we want to crack will be cracked. Um, so, I'm going to start by showing you some things about uh, FTK that relates to password cracking. Uh, to begin with, if we are on the Overview tab, we can check File Status, as I've done here, and then go to Encrypted Files, and FTK will be nice enough to list all the encrypted files in the file listing, like so. Uh, this is a very neat way to find encrypted files in, in a computer that we want to crack. Uh, as you see here, there are some of them in, in this case. These are Washer and Mantooth and Precious and so on. Uh, everyone who worked with or took any courses from Access Data will know those those images well. Uh, the next thing is how we export this text index that I talked to you about. And to do that, you just have to hit File, uh, Export Word List, and the text index will be exported as uh, a as a txt file. Uh, there is also the option to include data from registry files and uh, well there is really no downside to doing to doing that but the problem is that many of the keys are in binary format and I'm not sure if they are translated to to an ASCII format when you do that here. Okay so uh, I've already done this 
So I'm going to click down FTK so that it doesn't take resources from PRTK, which is a program uh, of relevance for this demo. And there are a few things that I want to show you. Uh, you know, using PRTK is fairly simple. You just go file, uh, fi file, add files, and PRTK will analyze the file, tell you what it is, and tell you what hex it can run against it. But there are some uh, pre pre settings that you may, may want to do. So we're gonna walk through them uh, very very quickly. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you is under edit. Uh, here you see that we have rules and profiles. We're going to work more with those. Uh, for now I want to show you the preferences tab. And especially under general there is a very good uh, uh, option here that is not on by default. But you see here that there is a recovery option called decrypt file when the key is found. And I really like that because what it does is that say that you're using PRTK to crack uh, crack a document, a Word document, and then you may want it to to save it uh, in the decrypted state once you found the key, and this will do, do that. So with the options that we have now, uh, whenever I crack something, the encrypted version of that, uh, or the decrypted version of that encrypted file will end up in the same directory as the encrypted file, very nice and tidy. Uh, there are also some uh, special options you can do if you want to have some audio alert, some drop folders, so you can use, uh, you can s tell PRTK to uh, crack all encrypted files in the folder and you can just dump files in there when you want PRTK to crack them. The thing with password cracking is that it is definitely slow enough so that manually adding files is not a problem. Maybe it's even a good thing because you have a little bit more control over what's happening. Uh, dum 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 dum. That's it. And uh, next thing I want to show you is how you import WordList into FTK, and that you can find that if you go to Tools, then you have the Dictionary Utility that looks like this. Uh, the basic setting or the standard setting here, or the first thing that we'll see is the standard dictionary generator, and the standard dictionary generator that's used when you simply want to import the text file of words into. Uh, PRTK. It's, it expects a word list that is separated by enter, so one word in each line. And I'm going to show you here if we go browse. And on the desktop, I have a word list, my word list that I exported before. And I'm going to show you how that looks. So it's it's just like this it's a text file with one one word in each line. And you see that there is a lot of mumbo yumbo, but there is also some more reasonable words. Um, so back to PRTK, we select that and then we hit generate and it will be imported into FTK or into PRTK. This is uh, this does take some time, of course it takes more time the longer the word list is, So, I'm not, but I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, there is also more settings if you want to, uh, for example, restrict the length of the words that you import, restrict what s uh, symbols you use and there is also sort entries and remove duplicates and uh, here I want to mention that a part of my strategy for recovering passwords is looking for password dumps on the internet and import them into FTK and they, or into PRTK and then use them for every password I want to crack and uh, the thing here is that when I want to, when I work in that way then I think it's smart to sort and remove duplicates however that is quite a time consuming a task so when I'm importing indexes like I'm doing here then I don't do that because the index is uh, in this scenario quite small it's usually just a couple of millions word million of words so generate when I want to generate uh, I've already done that so I'm gonna show you how it looks in a little while but before I do that I want to uh, put your attention to some of the other dictionary tools uh, if you hit in in the top left here, you see that we have the biographical dictionary generator uh, where you can input uh, words relating to a person, like if you want to do one for me it would be Joachim, and uh, then it may be uh, some word about something that interests me, football, and uh, then it might be my uh, some date, which might be my birthday, which is definitely not in 2000, uh, 1989, something like that. And then you can put in what information you found about a person. 
then you go to generator and you go generate and what this will do is basically that it will be combine the biographical data in different ways and create a very long word list from that uh, just as an just as a, a demonstration, we can do that with the three words that I inputted here. Uh, what we have to do then is select a name for it. Uh, so we call it Joachim K, which is my name, and it's built. And now we have a biographical dictionary for me. This is a good time to show you the dictionary browser, which is present under dictionary tools uh, in the top left. So if we do dictionary tools, dictionary browser, uh, then we can see the dictionaries that we have and here it is so you can actually see in the word count here that from the three words that I inputted it created 1060 words and if we view the entries we can see that it's all combinations of what I inputted uh, in here we can browse any other dictionary so we can for instance uh, browse the dictionary that we created my word list from the index or whatever we want to do. Uh, in the top here I want to show you something that you m might have seen which is the Golden Dictionary. Uh, the Golden Dictionary is a default dictionary that's uh, built into PRTK and what it basically is is that it's a dictionary that contains every password that you ever cracked. Uh, so the idea is that if I decided to use a certain string as a password then someone else might do the same. So PRTK saves every password that you ever cracked into this golden dictionary. Uh, and it's good for th two things. The first one is that it does save real passwords uh, with the thought that, well, if I use the password, someone el else might as well. The other good thing about it is that if I'm suspect for an investigation once and use a lot of uh, some different passwords and they are cracked, they are stored in the golden dictionary. If I get a become a suspect once again and use the same password, they will be very easy to crack because they're saved in the golden dictionary. Uh, so that's that and PRTK always uses the golden dictionary in the beginning of each attack so it's nothing that you need to think about. Uh, next thing, dictionary tool, I want to show you, yes, that there is a passphrase and permutation dictionary generator. Those work uh, the passphrase, uh, they work pretty much in the same way as the biographical dictionary generator in that, uh, in that they combine uh, words from a file in, in different ways, but instead of inputting the words yourself, it expects a text file as input. So if I wanted to do passphrases from my index, I could uh, import my index file here. And if I wanted to do a list of permutations from my index file, I could input that here. So that's that for the dictionary utility. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is uh, the profiles. And here I want you to know, if we go to edit and profile, uh, whenever you're doing a dictionary attack, what you're doing is basically that you're running a profile. So we do have to we have to build a profile. So in this case, I've exported some files from the crate from the case from uh, that I exported the index from, and now I want to do a profile. I want to build an attack to go against those files. And what I do then is that I select a new profile, or I use one of the pre-created profiles here and go. Uh, new from selected, that's what I'm going to do right now. So if I go new from selected here, and I'm going to show you how this uh, profile creation works. So first off, it can be good to have a name, uh, and I'm going to call it my test so that I know what it is. Uh, if you have a case, you can call it a case number, or if you have a file, you can call it a file name, or whatever. And the next thing we have uh, after naming is the dictionaries and this is a list of all the dictionaries that we have and what we're gonna do now is shows what dictionaries you want to use in this attack so I'm going gonna go ahead and do select none uh, and then you see that we have uh, a bunch of different dictionaries here and if you look at one dictionary such as this one you see that it has a prefix and the prefix uh, is basically what language it is written in and the number so this is DE which is Dutch or Deutsch so or at least I think this is German so I'm not going to use this we have some AR which is Arabic 
and we have some en which is, which is English and I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, en1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, these are uh, common common passwords or common words uh, some random words, names and some general words uh, then I'm going to go ahead and choose the list that's called my word list that's the word list that I created myself and I can go ahead and choose Joachim K as well and those are the dictionaries that I want to use. Uh, then there is a tab called order here uh, in which I choose the order in which I run my list and uh, in my case I believe that there is the highest chance is that the passwords will be present in some of my word lists uh, that I generated from the index so I'm going to mark them and move them to the very top. So this is the order in which the word lists will run. Uh, Next we have languages and character groups and the language is basically, well, uh, it's applicable to some of the rules down here. Uh, you just choose the language that seems most good. Uh, in my case it's almost ever, always English because I'm using working with English or Swedish computers and English works fine for Swedish computers as well. And uh, Next we have the character groups and that's basically what characters we're going to look for in the passwords um, and we can by default we have digits, lower and uppercase, diacritics and uh, standard symbols we can also choose to include extended symbols and uh, 7 and 8 bit character groups if we like uh, per, but perhaps the most important thing here is uh, the rules because the rules basically tells us how we will run the dictionaries. Uh, and there is also some some brute force rules that we can use here. Uh, and what I want to show you here is the naming convention. So if we look at uh, this rule here that I marked, you see that it's the pr it's prefixed with BAS-1. And BAS means that it's a basic rule. Uh, there are also the adv rule uh, the advanced rules and what you can say is basically that the basic rules will take much less time to run than the advanced rules. The advanced rules are advanced and as such you can expect that they will take a lot, lot longer to run. Uh, then there is uh, the digit that's directly after the BAS or ADV which is you see here it's a 1, here it's a 3, here it's a 1 and that is uh, the complexity of the rule within the basic or advanced group. So here is a BAS1 rule, meaning it's a basic rule with complexity 1. It's very simple and it's also a two-digit search, so it will search for every combination of two digits. It's, it will go very quick. And here it's a BAS3 rule, which is so, so it's a complexity level 3 within basic, so it will take a little bit more time than these. Uh, it's the same with the advanced rule. Here we have an advanced 1 and if we scroll down there's gonna be uh, for instance here there is a advanced 4 which is a 7 letter search it's going to do a brute force attack with 7 letters it's going to take a lot of time uh, so how this works is that you select the rules you want to have I'm going to go with select none and show you a couple here uh, in this case I want to do a I want to do those two just for demonstration purposes and then I'm looking for some when that is called uh, run dictionary as is which I am going to need yep here the best three rule which is use entries as is from the selected dictionary and that means that it will take the words from the dictionaries and run them as they are and that's what I want to use as my third rule. And then there is a lot of other words like two word concatenation with spaces that will combine all rules one on one. So it will take one word and then it will combine it with every other word. There is the three word concatenation. Uh, there are character replacements, uh, case toggling, and what you can do if you want to learn about all the rules is basically read the names of them one to one and you can also see that there is a question mark here which will take you to the help section where you can read more information about each rule and uh, the ordering of the rules works exactly the same way as the the ordering of the dictionaries it will uh, run in the order in which they appear and you can move up and down if you like 
uh, but now I'm quite pleased with doing one digit search then two digit search and then run the uh, use the entries as is so now that I'm done with my profile I've created the attack that I want to use I'm going to click OK and you can see that my test is here in the profiles and I'm going to close and now we're going into some cracking so if you want to load something into PRTK, you go File, Add Files, and then I exported some files from FTK for us into the PRTK demo, and we go here, and there is one called uh, laundry, uh, laundry List Doc that I want to try to crack, and now you can see that when I input something into PRTK, the first thing it does is that it analyzes the file. It tries to figure out what it is, and it tries to present us with a method of cracking it. Uh, so this is the first landing page for the Add Job Wizard, and the first thing that we need to do is select a profile that we want to use, and I want to go with my test that I just created specifically for this purpose. It's quite simple here you see that English is the default and it's quite simple to forget to change the profile English that is not a very good profile so you want to make sure that you change the profile to whatever you want so profile is selected let's hit next and on this uh, this page you will see uh, the different attacks that we can run so you see down here available attacks for this file and in this case there is actually a bunch of attacks that we can run um, for instance you see that since this is an office 97 or 2000 file it's a very old one and uh, then you can do a password attack with a dictionary and but there is also a decryption attack or a key space attack and this is because because of the al the way that the algorithm is implemented into those old office files it's a very limited amount of possible uh, binary or hexadecimal keys so it's actually pretty easy to exhaust the key space and find a way to encrypt the file and we're going to see that because when I hit finish here it's uh, the, the file is going to be added and in a little while it's going to be cracked I'm quite sure of it and when it's cracked we're going to see that the password is something that's a little bit mumbo yumbo if I'm not if I'm not mistaken um, when we're waiting for this, there are a few things that we can have a look at. Uh, the quick buttons here, for instance. Uh, you can see that there's a generate report button. Uh, using that, you can generate a report containing the passwords for cracked files, uh, what rules you use, etc. There is a shortcut for how to add a file. You can pause, resume, or delete jobs. Uh, manage profiles shortcut, dictionary utility shortcut. Uh, there is a shortcut to copy all passwords to the clipboard and uh, there is a shortcut to the preferences and then there is a, the help topics and now we're gonna see if this wants to start so I'm going to remove three This is a good time to show you how you can actually check uh, the status of. Oh no, you can do that in PRTK. Okay, okay. Uh, there is one more thing that I want to show you. You can double click a job and then you will get more detailed information. So, uh, this is some overview information which is not very interesting right now. There is also the rules section where you can see the rules that it's gonna run. So, now you can see here that it will begin with doing a one digit search, which will take which is 10 different passwords and then you can see that it's gonna do a two digit search which is 100 passwords and then you can see that it will do the uh, access rules for the different dictionaries that we choose in the order that we choose to and that's what it's gonna do for the password cracking attack you can also see some statistics uh, about how many attempts there are per second 
uh, and this is good p uh, in order to be able to calculate how much time it takes to crack something. Uh, I think that's what I wanted to show you right, right there. Now it stays skewed for some some reason, uh, and the thing you want to know need to know about PRTK is that it does, especially when working in a virtualized environment, it sometimes uh, doesn't really start. So I'm going to use the power of video editing here to just wait, and then we will come back when the attack is done. And then we're back. Uh, and as you can see now in the work. Uh, pain here is that the laundry list status changed to finished so if we mark that we're going to see uh, the result which is Capone and that basically means that we changed found the password and if you look if you double click the file so you get the properties tab up again you can see the results down here and you can see how we found the results and you can see that it was in my word list the one the index that I exported and if we go to rules, you can see where it was, which attacks it used. And you, well, no, you can't because it will always be 100% here when on a completed job. And I want to show you an example with a zip file as well because that's a bit slower. So I'm going add files, uh, desktop, PRTK demo, one, and then there is a zip file named secret that I ex exported. Uh, so now it's doing the identifying again. One moment, please. Now we have to remember to change the profiles. I'm going my test, going next. And now you can see that uh, what attacks we have available. And now I want to show you something here. To begin with, we have the zip dictionary attack, which does the nor standard dictionary attack. And then there is a zip known plain text attack. And uh, this is a attack we can use if we found a decrypted version of something in the zip archive and so this is sort of a special special attack but to be able to dis do this we will have to be, a uh, be able to submit a decrypted version of something in this in the zip archive and then there is something called the zip spare password generator and the spare password is a password that works in addition to the password that you want to use. Um, and to be able to do this attack, we need to find something that is called a zip key. And uh, a zip key is basically something that we can uh, imp it's basically a password that we found on beforehand so this is an attack that is very com very commonly not usable so uh, this time we're, we're only going to be able to do the dictionary attack so we're going to hit finish and let, let PRTK do its, do its magic and let's hope to god that this, this one starts uh, quite quickly yes it does and you can see that for this one as well we have the result here password seems to be ring we can double click it and we can see that this password was also found in the my word list and there is something that I want to show you here uh, if we look at the rules that we used you can see here that this was found in my word list too and if we look at our rules here you can see that my word list two is the third rule that we used so to find this it's been looking through first the one digit search which is 10 passwords the two digit search which is 100 password and then it's been looking through my word list one which is 361,000 passwords so in just a blink of an eye on a virtual machine PRTK managed to look through at least 361,000 passwords and then uh, likely a fair bit into my word list two as well so password cracking is really quick in the sense that you do can that in modern computer system you can test a very large amount of passwords very quickly. And the last thing I want to show you is uh, that since we decided that, that PRTK was supposed to output the files uh, or the encrypted decrypted version of the files, I'm going to PRTK dem demo and one where my files are, and then you can see that that actually didn't work. 
So then instead we can uh, go file properties. Uh, I'm going to blame this one on access data because I'm quite sure that if I go file, if I go edit preferences, oh, so my option was removed, moved. So okay, let's set this one again. So. Uh, edit preferences and then I'm choosing to decrypt files when the key is found, found same file as directory do, 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 do. the path for the decrypt folder is empty okay. let's go save in desktop prtk demo new folder new select directory Okay, now it seems happy. Now, since the files are in the golden dictionary, it should be really quick. So, I'm inputting secret again. Secret. So, one thing that you do need to know about forensic programs is that they do tend to cra uh, crash and not work as you want wish them to add occasions as was seen throughout those demos I could if I wanted to issues uh, have chosen to video edit all the all the mishaps away but I want to show you that there are times when the programs misbehave or the programs just crash and that's something that you need to be aware of so that you save your work at regular intervals uh, well anyhow now you can see that we cracked it again the password is still ring as you can see here and now it actually says that it's been decrypted successfully meaning that if I go to the file browser I go back to the PRTK demo I go to new then there should be a decrypt secret so it calls the decrypted version of the file decrypt dash the name of the file so now I should be able to extract this extract here and the content should be readable and it seems to be and just to show you that I haven't cheated I go back to one and I try to extract the archive that it was from the beginning you can see now it wants a password of course I can input the password that we found which was ring and that should work as well uh, so anyhow, this was the demo for Access Data PRTK. Now we've done some password cracking, and there is only two video lectures left. Next time we're going to go uh, go about with some um, uh, Regis Reviewer, which is a program that doesn't really use to crash. So we hope for some luck with that. But until until that time, uh, have a nice day and see you.